Hello everyone and welcome back to the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog. In this tutorial we're going to be showing you how you can create some quick and easy clouds using Maya with no plugins. So let's jump into Maya and the first thing we need to do is create some uh, cloud geometry. So for that I'm just going to use a sphere and I'm going to up the subdivisions in the X and Y and I'm just going to um, scale it slightly in the X axis um, just to create quite an oblong shape. And I'm going to go to the rigging tool set and go to deform and create a texture deformer. In the texture deformer, we're going to drop in a uh, 3D texture and that's going to be a volume noise. So just 3D texture and then volume noise. And it's going to look weird straight off. So if we go back to the texture deformer attributes, we need to change the direction to normal and the point space to world. And it will be apparent why we've done that in a minute. Um, so now we need to set up this uh, texture. So if we go into the texture, and I'm just going to turn the frequency right down so it's just basically distorting into a nice sort of cloud looking type shape um, and maybe I can lower that a little bit more and that's looking pretty good to me and you'll see that if, if we move it we get loads of different iterations of it and that's because we put the point space to world um, within the texture deformer you can see uh, point space world and that's exactly what we want. We want to be able to make a few different versions of this. Um, so to add a, a bit more fine detail to this, I'm going to add a second texture deformer to it. And this is just going to be the extra really light detail um, on the top. So set that up in the same way. And we're going to drop in a second uh, volume noise. And this one is just going to basically be um, some fine details on the top of the main distortion. So I'm going to turn the strength of this right down. And what we're looking for is just these extra little bits of jaggedy detail to make it not look as perfect. And you'll see if we move this around, we can get loads of different iterations of it. So, and that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to just um, move it into different positions and duplicate it. And you can see I've just pressed Command D or Control D and duplicated um, the original. And I'm just going to create a load of different versions of this. And these are going to be what we use to base our cloud um, particles on. So. It doesn't really matter how many you do, just as long as you've got a good amount of variation. So I think I'll do a couple more. And look for positions where it looks quite a lot different to the other ones. Like you don't want them to look completely the same. You want them to have a good amount of variation. So I think that will be okay. So I'm just going to hide the original. And um, in fact, I'm just going to delete all the um, original stuff, like the deformers. We don't need those anymore. So I'm just left with these seven pieces of geometry. So I'm going to go to the animation tool set, go to mash and create mash network. And um, you'll see everything will disappear for a second, but there is our mash network. And we're going to use mash to distribute these clouds um, uh, randomly. So if we go into the mash settings and go to the ID um, drop down, the ID node, sorry, um, there it is add ID node and then you'll see that um, that's going to use all of our clouds now. I'm going to put the ID type to random as well so um, they don't just cycle through in the same order. In the mass uh, distribute I'm going to change the distribute type to grid and I'm just going to start spacing these out in um, their grid uh, layout. So I think I'm going to put uh, 6 in the Z and 6 in the X and maybe just 2 in the Y. Um, I don't want the cloud field to be too thick. And I'm just going to see what looks good. I'm just going to space these out and um, try and get quite a even distribution without any overlapping or anything like that. And I would recommend keeping the cloud geometries really quite small because um, Bifrost goes extremely slow if it uses um, large geometries. So that's just something to keep in mind. Maybe these ones are a little bit big. But now we can go about uh, distributing these randomly. So we add a random node um, into our MASH network. And we can go and configure this now. So I'm going to uh, tick the uniform scale checkbox and I'm going to increase the scale um, to, let's say, 3. I'll move the position um, just so that uh, there's not as much overlap. I mean, some overlap is okay because uh, it'll just look like a bigger cloud. Um, but I'm just going to uh, find some settings that look good, basically. Um, this will be different for however you set your uh, cloud geometry up. Um, so it's basically just trial and error. I'm going to actually go back into the distribute and increase the spacing in the grid. And that's starting to look okay. Um, I think this could work for a cloud field. Um, maybe just do a few more tweaks. I think the spacing in the Y could be a little bit bigger. I'm going to have a look what the absolute scale uh, checkbox does. And it actually looks a little bit better. We've got some smaller clouds going on. Um, and I'll change the scale to 5 actually, that 
that seems to have made a bit of an impact. So again, this is just trial and error. It all depends on how you set up the, your cloud geometries uh, to begin with. So I think we're starting to look alright. I'm going to bring it down in the Y again. And yeah, that looks pretty good to me. And the beauty of this is that um, we can change our random seed value um, and get a completely different look each time. So we can really quickly um, iterate how the clouds are going to look um, without resetting things up again. So that's the beauty of using a mesh network there. So just find one that looks good. I think this one would work. You could definitely um, make this look like a cloud field um, with the camera flying through it. So if you look in the outliner, you'll see that um, mash actually creates a one mesh, and that's the mash one repro mesh um, on the left hand side, and that's what we're going to use for our uh, bifrost simulation. So if you go to the effects toolkit, go to bifrost, and just click arrow, that's going to um, create particles that fill this mesh. If you, um, I'm just hiding the repro mesh there, so we can see the particles. And I'm just going to change a few settings. I've turned continuous emission off um, so it doesn't um, basically pour out from these clouds. And I'm going to turn the gravity off as well so that they don't uh, sink um, downwards per frame. So each of these settings might take a second to load because it's um, a heavy simulation. But if I go back into the aero shape and hide the particles and just look at the voxels, you'll see that we've already got some pretty nice looking clouds there. And it does a pretty good job of handling in, in the viewport as well. So if I go to the aero 1 shape underneath the uh, Bifrost aero 1 drop down, you'll see that we, can, we have a shader. Um, if we go right across the materials and you can tweak these and get some feedback in the viewport and it doesn't actually look that far off from the rendered version so I've just dropped in a physical sky um, through the Arnold uh, toolbox and I'm just going to load the Arnold render view so we can get some uh, quick uh, look development going on so I'll just uh, turn the IPR renderer on and you'll see the clouds actually straight out of the box look pretty good um, they look pretty realistic um, what I want to do is create a background though um, so I'm just going to go into the render settings go into Arnold renderer I'm going to environment and under background I'm just going to use the physical sky that we just created and you'll see um, it might look like nothing's changed but there is a sky in there so this physical sky is just a hemisphere um, there is so basically just half a sphere so just for the purposes of this tutorial I'm going to do a really quick and dirty method to make this fill the whole background and that's basically just I'm just going to rotate this physical sky <laughs> um, to one side um, in the extra attributes um, just so that I can get a really quick render out of it this isn't recommended at all it's just a really quick and dirty way of <laughs> filling the background um, so as you can see the shader that comes with the Bifrost Aero um, actually looks really good just straight out the box but um, I think it's time to go into it and start to configure it a little bit. So there's tons of attributes that you can play with. Um, so the emission is basically the inner light of the of the cloud. So it's like what light it sort of emits. Um, the absorption is how much it's going to absorb the light coming from behind it. So um, that's useful if you want some of the blue to bleed through the cloud. Um, if, also, if you go into the sky dome light and turn the intensity up, you can obviously make the clouds brighter that way. Um, but back into the uh, aero material, uh, if we can get back into that, um, the scattering is basically subsurface scattering, so that's how much the light is going to penetrate through the cloud um, and illuminate it in that way. So you're going to want to spend some time setting these up, but as you can see, it, it does look pretty good um, straight away. Um, in the physical sky attributes, uh, the turbidity is basically particles in the air, um, so it'll sort of turn the blue a little bit off blue. Um, and you can use the sky tint to sort of make it look um, a little bit darker um, so sort of darken the blue a little bit but it's basically that is the setup um, and you can tweak everything really really easily and just get a look that you want um, but that's basically it and finally right before you render one of the most important attributes is this master voxel uh, size and you've got to be really careful when you tweak this because it will it's basically the master resolution so at the moment it's at 0 0.5 but if I change it to 0 0.25 that's going to double the resolution and I actually just paused the video there because it took around like two minutes to calculate that but that's just doubled the resolution so be very careful um, when um, changing that voxel size but that adds in basically double the amount of detail so you'll see there's already way more detail in these clouds now and that's basically it. Um, the render times are usually quite large with Bifrost Aero, especially with this many particles. But like I mentioned earlier, if you um, kept your geometry quite small in um, sort of world scale, um, you shouldn't have too many problems. 
So yeah, um, I hope you have some fun with this. Um, once again, thank you for watching. This has been the Yellow Dog 3D Tips blog, and stay tuned for more 3D tips. Cheers.